Well, it seems I just can't get away from making Echo's content at the moment. It seems every time I think I've said everything that I want to say, something new comes up and I basically have to address that as well. This week's update has been controversial to say the least with the new AI nano cores um, and just all kinds of other stuff going on with the skills, etc. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with most of it. I've had a lot of people ask, am I going to do a video on the AI cores and how they work? And the short answer to that is, as much as I would like to, no, not really, because I would have to buy one myself and I simply do not have the finances to waste on doing that just for a video that is uh, for content that I don't want to be supporting anyway. But it turns out it's probably not something you guys want to use anyway. Desud has done a fantastic breakdown on Reddit here. I've reached out to several other players and just wanted to confirm and double check a lot of this. And yeah, everyone has said the exact same thing. So I'm gonna go over this article on the Echoes subreddit, talk about the bullet points and how this actually somehow makes a bad situation even worse. Like, I would want to look at this and just laugh and be like, lol, NetEase can't even implement the trash right, but it does actually have some much more sinister and malicious implications down the road. So, without further ado then, let's jump right in on this one. And no, normally I don't browse with it this large on screen, it's just better for videos this way. So, Desud posts, the AI core is hilariously lazy and inept, and I will put a link to this article in the description down below as well for those of you who want to just double check it. So first of all, bounty rewards when using the AI core are cut by 50%. Not sure if this was in the patch notes or not. No, I went back through the patch notes, it does not mention this anywhere in there. So that's already fairly misleading. You're getting a load of people who are going to buy these and spend to get this active, only to realize that, oh, it actually halves the income I could be making anyway. And on the surface level, I'm kind of okay with that part of the core, because if you're gonna automate something, yeah, you should make it less lucrative than the stuff that actually requires attention, right? That to me makes sense, that if you're gonna automate something, yes, make it less lucrative, but it doesn't stop there. Based on the capability of your ship and the fact that the fuel for the AI is currently priced at around 10 million ISKs per hour, it's very likely for lower tier pilots to actually operate at a loss using the AI. For example, in the course of an hour, my 3,604 DPS Vindicator will make approximately 43 million ISK in Tech 10 high second counters. If you don't have a ship up to par with this doing tier 10, it's quite possible to be in the red. This certainly isn't a feature intended for new players. But then again, what is in Eve Echoes these days? Even the new skills are locked behind Tech 10 for some reason. Like genuinely, it appears that Netties just do not care about the new players no matter how much we shout at them, that that is going to cause the game to die. We were having a conversation in the official uh, Avacos Discord the other night, and oh boy, there were just so many opinions going around there, and I was being told by one particular person who shall remain nameless, mainly because I don't care enough, that I don't run a business, therefore clearly I don't understand, that absolutely when your player base shrinks, you have to increase the costs of everything, and that's simply not true. Like, I've worked with enough game development companies in my lifetime, outside of being a content creator as well, to know that there's absolutely a significantly better option. Putting your prices up actually tends to push away more of your customers. So the better thing to do is to find ways to engage new customers. Games like Fortnite, Minecraft, heck, even War Robots and stuff like this on mobile have figured this out. It's why you can do free-to-play completely safely. You can free-to-play PUBG and have no negatives whatsoever because you are providing content for the big spenders and they're hoping that enough of those little guys as well will also spend more. The kind of real world analogy to this is that if you built a cafe or a restaurant or something and you didn't have many guests coming in, so you decide that to in like increase profitability, you're gonna put the cost of all your food up, now the people who like were coming to your restaurant feel like they're being priced out and a lot of people who were looking over you know around the corner and going oh that place looks interesting should we check it out check out the menu on the door and go nope that's just horrific you have actually doubled down and shot yourself in the foot harder the better thing to do is to find ways to engage new players because some of those will inevitably become spenders and some of those will become big spenders and the big spenders feel comfortable to spend more because there's more content around them there's more players around them, they feel more comfortable that the game is stable, right? Makes sense? Cool. Let's move on then. 
For the AI to begin to do anything, it has to fully lock onto every pirate, including the frigates. It will not activate any modules until this is done. This means your hardeners and repairers are off while battleships are getting free hits in. It will also turn off your repairer between waves. Great. That, that makes sense, right? It's, but what we're saying there is with the repairer turning off between waves is if you are at low health, you would normally like repair whilst the new wave spawns and moves in. No, this is not what the AI does. It actually just switches off the repairer until you are back into combat with something and then starts repairing again. So all of that time that you could be using to actually repair your shields and armor is being wasted. And you just have to wait until everything has been possibly locked before it attacks. That's just terrible AI there because, <laughs> but again, it gets worse. The AI's code is based loosely off that of a pirate ship. Yes, the Corelli Algos Interdictor is now piloting your ship, and I just love that analogy. This also means your targeting has aggro mechanics, and will flip back and forth between targets just for the hell of it. So you'll start to shoot one thing, be starting to break its tank, and then you'll start to shoot something else, and the first thing then just reps itself all the way back up, because that's how this works, right? Awesome. The AI has a poor concept of optimal range and will orbit somewhere in the middle between optimal and full off. It will target whatever it feels like, regardless of if that target is in range. Now, the orbiting somewhere in the middle between optimal and full off actually really works if you're using an autocannon fit. Not so much for railguns or lasers, however, <laughs> but hey, there we are. We, we can't expect netties at this point to understand how their game actually works, right? But hey, I guess this is the kind of thing that is difficult to get an AI to do in inverted commas. I say it's difficult to do because, yes, there are a lot of different variations on ships and weaponry and different situations where a pilot is going to understand these things inherently better than an AI is going to, but it just means it's poorly programmed, right? Because netties have failed to do with their rats what CCP managed to do ages ago. Like recently in EVE Online, we brought a load of new people across to Catskull, we set up a station in a high security system, and then we had a pirate outpost launch into our system. And these spawn diamond tier rats, which are kind of like elites. And those guys are insane. Like genuinely, you can undock from the station and try to attack these rats that are orbiting about 100Ks. But as soon as you get close, they will attack you for a while and then they will actually warp off to one of the other rats for a bit of safety and then warp back to you. They warp in and out of combat. They know how to use their optimal ranges and they know how to kite and all this kind of thing. CCP have figured it out. Netties haven't and don't seem to care to because this could have been the kind of thing that would have made PvE actually engaging and interesting rather than just trying to patch over it with a nanocore that doesn't work. So, the AI has poor concept of optimal range, the AI has no concept of tracking mechanics and will happily corpse itself trying to attack a probe for never-ending misses. This is especially bad on fast-ish battleships like the Vindicator. Don't even bother using micro warp drive and if you use an afterburner you'll have to turn your speed down 50% or make up the difference somehow via tracking computers or rigs. Basically the ship doesn't understand that the faster it goes the worse its own tracking becomes and when it's trying to shoot the small ships, that provides a humongous problem for things. Oh man. <laughs> the AI warps to zero. Sniper build, too bad. Yeah, so all of those folks in Apocalypse Strikers, and I was speaking to a few folks who had tried it with an Apocalypse Striker and then immediately noped out once it realized they realized that it was basically sitting at uh, zero and then trying to orbit from there. Like, that's just awful. It has no concept of how to actually do its own content, which makes sense because it's, you know, it, it, it's been programmed by people who have no concept of how to do their own content either. The AI has no concept of ship-specific modes, such as Siege Mode, which is probably for the best as it'd be too stupid to use them correctly. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. I can imagine like it auto warping an apocalypse striker to zero, putting on siege mode and then just sitting there wondering why it's dying. Oh man. The AI has no concept of refresh time for missions. It will spend several minutes spamming the refresh button to no avail. Thankfully, it seems to eventually get it and stops its attempts. By shutting off the AI, basically it overloads itself. Both a fail on the part that the time spent fruitlessly brute forcing the refresh button is crystal fuel down the drain, and in that you'll have to come back and start it up again. Yeah, the autopilot that you have to keep checking whether or not it's actually on. It sounds like a Tesla, doesn't it, at this point? <laughs> but there we go. 
the AI will not loot, which honestly, this I expected from the start when people were saying, I wonder if it'll auto loot for you. I was like, no, I very much doubt it will auto loot for you. They want you to be using the salvages at this point. And yeah, as Sud says here, I guess they got to sell them salvage chips somehow. The AI continually blathers on about how great it is. I was intrigued by the voice lines, but my God, I've been shown some footage of this and it's just awful. It's got an ego bigger than most big corporate CEOs in this game and that's saying something. <laughs> You'll want to set voice volume to zero unless you're amused by a machine expressing how great it is for poorly operating <laughs> turrets and shields. Oh yeah, oh I know that one so well. I know that one so well, like it, th th that sounds like my, my YouTube comment section about two years ago, but oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, they couldn't even get the voice lines right. The AI has no concept of diminishing returns, so if you run, say, four ballistic control modules that you activate in pairs to macro uh, maximize DPM, the AI will instead go, duh, press them all at once. And to make matters worse, there seems to be some inconsistency as to when it'll activate them next. I've just seen the AI refuse to use them at times. He then edits that this appears to be a bug with ballistics not showing their cooldown timers after the AI uses them, so yeah, it just basically slaps all four the second they come off cooldown. Again, this I kind of understand it, kind of understand it, understood. Wow, English, very good, much wow. Um, because again, that's kind of an intricacy of running a ship. I did expect that if you were going to run an AI nano core like this, you would have to somewhat alter the ship fit, just because otherwise it would not understand all the intricacies of ship fitting. Like this is kind of the equivalent of handing the like full fit and some basic instructions to someone who has never played Eve Echoes before in their life. It, it's kind of like, you know, opening the game, going onto like the forums, just downloading, or well, the Reddit, of course, downloading one of the fits that you see there, crossing your fingers and just hoping it works whilst having no understanding of how that fit works. Again, like the people who seem to watch my ship fit videos and have it on mute where I sit there and explain why I've done something and they're like, you know, oh, that makes no sense. And it's like, well, I, I, I did explain. It's kind of like the AI is doing that, that essentially it's just kind of looking at a fit and making its own assumptions and doing what it should, you know, doing what it thinks it should. So I did expect that there was going to be a bit of having to modify your fit in order to get the AI to actually behave and understand it a little bit better. But again, it is disappointing to see but this is where things really start to get funny. It uses some idiotic algorithm and splits DPS and E-War for no intelligent reason. For example, it will attack a probe orbiting 3 kilometers, but sets the Vindicator's webs and Nosferatu on the battleship at 20 kilometers. I need the webs on the probe to hit the probe, so it sits there E-Warring a target right off in the distance that doesn't actually need it and ignores the thing that, you know, does need it, like webs or target painters, and then, you know, honestly, that's one that I really thought that they could easily like program in. Like they can tell, surely. They have on-screen text that says if you're glancing or smashing or whatever with your weaponry. So if it's continuously miss, 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 you'd have thought they'd have programmed something that might suggest it puts the webifiers and target painters on that target, but apparently not. Better hope your implant is a passive set and forget, like focus crystals, because the AI ain't using it. Again, you'd think there'd be some integration between the AI and the previous big system that NetEase added to the game, but again, apparently not. Couldn't tell you whether or not it'll bug out if it figures it's going to die. Wouldn't trust it in a scenario that isn't guaranteed victory. Edit, watched rats take my Vindy to hull, AI didn't care, had to manually send it out to not die. And again, I know a lot of people here are going to be like, lol, so there's going to be a whole load of noobs losing their ships, but that's part of the sinister reason that I'll be talking about in just a moment. I've got a couple of points and then we'll, you know, get onto what this all actually means going forward. While your ship is stuck in an endless cycle trying to hit a probe that it refuses to web, it will also not shoot any of the other targets that it could possibly hit. If you get the bug where the game micro disconnects, you warp into space and the AI, despite still being active, will have no idea how to proceed. So basically, yeah, you've got an AI that actually requires you to repeatedly check in as to whether or not it's still working. It doesn't understand how to fly a ship. It flies it incredibly poorly. It then also does that at a 50% bounty reward cut, reducing your income, and requires a very expensive fuel to run. Now, 
Again, it would be very easy, and believe me, my immediate urge when reading this was just to laugh and go, oh, well, okay, so everyone who's paid for this is, you know, just gonna end up with a really crap situation, and it's another NetEase mega fail in the game. And look, I'm not here to mock whales. Some of the whales are really great players. There are a lot of whales who do like to complain about stupid things and want the game to basically automate for them and don't understand, you know, how to play the game. We've all seen those whales who literally just rock up and buy the most expensive stuff, stuff, slap it on a ship and have no concept how it works, but that's not what we're here to talk about. What I'm here to say is that this is an abject failure on behalf of NetEase. The, the thing that they are marketing as a way to automate the gameplay doesn't actually work, and it has downsides to it that are not advertised before people spend a lot of time and money trying to get it operational. Now, that, it, that, that sucks, full stop. Like, at this point in time, if the game is going to cater to the whales, then it needs to make sure that it does actually cater to them. And if it's not going to cater to them, or in this case, it's actually going to damage them, then those guys are going to start getting really upset about it, and you do run the risk of some of them going, you know what, I'm done. I'm done with this. I spend too much money on this game to be treated like an idiot. And that's fair enough. That is genuinely fair enough. The more insidious part of this, though, is that this took development time to develop. NetEase were presented with the problem that AI, uh, sorry, that PVE was dull, repetitive, and boring. Therefore, rather than try and fix the inherent problems in the game, they just tried to automate it, and they wholeheartedly failed at that. Now, this by anyone else would just be a case of, all right, well, okay, we'll issue a refund, we'll scrap the idea, and we will, you know, get on with other things. This is NetEase, though, that we're talking about, and if history in Ebecos has shown us anything, it's that they will absolutely spend entirely too long trying to fix this. They invented a system that we didn't need, but now that it doesn't work, we're going to spend even more development time trying to actually fix it. As someone mentions in the comments of this Reddit post, yeah, they care about the whales enough that expect the rat AI to suddenly jump up in difficulty, which quite frankly I think is a good thing. I do think that's a good thing, and that's just kind of what should have been done before, rather than automating the game, you should have just made it so the game was fun to play, right? And actually had some sort of challenge to it. But what we're seeing here is something that was a colossal waste of development time and resources that could have been spent going on to literally anything else to actually help the game with things that need severe help. And instead of that, we got a situation, well, we got a system that just doesn't work. And the fact that that system doesn't work means that they're going to spend a lot more development time and resources trying to get it to work. It's something no one asked for, but we are going to have everything else put on hold until this is functional. Just like I've said before that when it comes to uh, the Corporations Clash, I find it hilarious that you could open up Corporations Clash a few days ago and there's less than 20 people on the leaderboards, meaning it's barely being used. But this does mean that we're going to see new reasons to start using it. They will start putting rewards, they will start incentivizing its use. Rather than just apologize, remove the core and give everyone a refund, NetEase will double down on this and spend entirely too long trying to fix a system that literally no one asked for. And I don't know. I don't know. Like, there's some comments here like, won't matter, throw it on a carrier in your set. No, no, that doesn't work, because you can't use carriers in high sec, and a carrier warping to zero and just sitting there is going to die. Like, there's, there's so much wrong with this. There is just so much wrong with this. And it's not going to end here. That's the really, like, upsetting point about this. It's not going to end here. They will double down on the fact that this doesn't work and they will spend a lot of time and energy to try and fix this. This is time that should have been spent doing literally anything else like, you know, getting rid of the tech system or reworking the tech system so that new players feel like they have something to do in the game. None of this is going to happen. None of this is going to happen. It's just going to be playing around with a broken system that they've decided is the answer to everything. And... It's worth spending a time briefly before I go just to point out how NetEase does business because people don't seem to understand this kind of stuff. 
Like, I've spoken enough with Melos and Cloud and the rest of the team to know that there is stuff that they wanted to add to the game, suggestions that we the community made that they thought were freaking fantastic. But that's not how it works. Cloud, Exile, Melos, Lancedot, these guys don't get the final say. Their job is to essentially design systems and ideas that they think will work for the game. Then they present that to the hires up, the executives, who then choose what they approve and what they deny. And then once a, an idea has been approved, the higher ups assign a team to develop that. Once it's developed, that team is sent off to a new project and the developers of the game start working on their next ideas. So if you go to Melos or Exile or Cloud or whoever and say, we don't want this, it's kind of too late because the higher ups have already made the decision that this is what we're getting. And when the higher ups find out that this isn't working, the ultimate decision comes down to push it harder, make this work, fix this work, fix all of this. You can present as many ideas as you like, but it's kind of like walking into your local Walmart or whatever and demanding to speak with the manager to get them to change all of the company's policies and pricing and stuff like that. It's not going to happen because that manager simply does not have the authority to make those decisions. It's not Cloud, Melos and Exile who are making these decisions, it's the people above it who decide what is and is not a good idea. And those are the people who have decided that automating the game in a way that makes money, like gets people to spend a whole ton of money, is going to be the way forward. And when that starts to fail, the overwhelming response, we've seen this in other NetEase games as well, we've seen it in Eve Echoes numerous times, the way that they handle that is to throw more at it. They do not have the concept of just cut your losses and move on to the next thing. It will absolutely be the focus from here on out. Expect a lot of patch notes that will say, hey, this isn't working, we're working on improving it. And there we go. Yeah, hilariously lazy and inept, and that is very damaging for the game state we currently have, because it runs the risk of upsetting a lot of the people who are actually still sticking around. The people who told me that, oh, actually, this core is a good idea, actually, have now just been proven completely wrong, and everything that we've been saying for the past week about this, or the content creators who knew about this, like, a month ago, but weren't allowed to say anything, and were sitting in the CC lounge going, guys, this is a really bad idea, this is a really bad idea, idea, it's not going to work like that, it's not going to work like that. We've been ignored, we've been vindicated, we know that this is what's happening. So yeah, buckle in, brace yourselves, it's going to be a fun ride. Anyway folks, thank you for listening to this one right the way through to the end. I do apologise for the echo, we're doing some renovations on the house at the moment which meant that I'm not really able to get into my usual uh, recording position, um, so I'm just recording at my desk at the moment with a lot of echo around me. One of these days I'll actually get some, you know, foam on the walls or something like that, but <laughs> money, right? Anyway folks, thanks for all your support, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!